welcomes you to tonight's Zoom Candidate Forum. I am Barbara Hoppe and I am your moderator. I am also on the board of on the board of the League of Women Voters of Columbia Boone County. Uh, tonight we are focusing on the only primary contested race, and that is for the Republican nomination for Northern Boone County Commissioner. Uh, the winner will face Democratic candidate Janet Thompson in the November 3rd election, and both candidates will be invited to participate in the October Candidate Forum. In the primary election on August 4th, each voter must choose a party ballot, Democrat, Republican, or an independent ballot. And there will be one ballot issue regarding Medicaid expansion. Um, I wanna say a little bit about the county commission and then introduce the candidates. Uh, the county commission is an elected three member governing body with a district one Southern commissioner, a district two Northern commissioner and a presiding commissioner. The commission establishes county policy, approves and adopts the annual budget for all county, county operations, um, approves actual expenditures for each department supervises the operation of public works, planning and zoning, building codes, human resources, purchasing information technology, and facilities and ground maintenance. They ensure countywide compliance with numerous statutory requirements, and they act as a liaison with various county boards, commissions, and other government entities. Um, the Republican primary candidates in tonight's forum, um, and we have three of the four, are Brian Riddles, Jim Musgraves, and Tristan Asbury. Each candidate will have time for a two minute opening statement, followed by several questions uh, prepared by the League of Women Voters. We also have a chat feature on Zoom so viewers can write their questions during the program and we will try to get to as many as possible um, during the program. Um, each candidate will be given um, two minutes for an opening statement and then a minute and a half for answering questions and then a minute for a closing statement. Um, I also have little index cards to indicate 10 seconds left and when the time has expired. Um, with that, uh, we will um, go to opening statements and the candidates will give their opening statement in ballot order and then closing statements will be in reverse ballot order. So Mr. Riddles, you may present your opening remarks. Well, first I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for providing this opportunity. Hi, I'm Brendan Riddle. I've lived in Boone County for over 40 years. I'm a licensed electrician. That's how I've supported my family for over 30 years. I joined the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers in 1998, I'm remarried and my wife and I are raising a family in the house I built in 1994. All of that is to say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm invested in Boone County. I'm not starting a political career camp with this campaign. I enjoy the work I do. I've had my years of experience making cold places warm, hot places cool and dark places light. What I don't enjoy is what I've seen of the Boone County Commission wasting resources hiding monuments and lately fighting amongst themselves in an attempt to deny each other opportunities to represent the county. In short, I'm tired of watching the commission conduct themselves with a what can we get away with attitude instead of a what's right for the people we work for attitude. I promise you I won't forget who I work for. I won't forget the difference between a boss, a manager, and a leader. I, I believe I'm the best candidate for the job. <laughs> 
my years as a corporate officer, my decades of experience in the building automation specialist have taught me the leadership skills required to bring people of opposing interests to a place of cooperation. I think that the most important thing in the, in the long term future for Boone County is to grow the tax base, not the tax rate. In the immediate future, we are going to have a problem with the budget because of our COVID response. It's my hope that we don't have to have any significant reductions in workforce and that we can not make <laughs> crash and burn. I'm reading the sign. We got to, we have to stop doing injury to our economy. We have to get back, people back to work and we have to coach them when we need to, but we have to get out of the way. Thank you for your time and thank you for your vote. Thank you, Mr. Riddles. Mr. Musgraves, you may present your opening remarks. Hey, good evening, everybody. And uh, League of Women Voters, thank you very much for this opportunity. I appreciate it. My name is Jim Musgraves. I'm a recently retired within the last year, a 31 year plus veteran in the United States Navy. I'm also a University of Missouri alumnus. I earned an NROTC scholarship uh, about two years after I enlisted on the U.S. Navy, which brought me back to Boone County. Uh, from there, I learned, uh, earned my degree and uh, left Boone County to go to Navy flight training, uh, where I flew helicopters for 25 years. As a naval officer, I had the privilege to serve with some of America's finest. Over the course of several tours and many years, I gained a lot of leadership experience. And I have successfully built and led teams of small handful to hundreds of people. I have successfully developed and in implemented plans to efficiently manage assets in a variety of environments, some valued at thousands of dollars and those into multiple millions of dollars. I have judiciously and efficiently managed budgets, again, some in the thousands and some in the multi-millions. I've successfully organized and led many cross-organizational uh, collaborations, uh, not only in the United States, but internationally as well. Additionally, during my off-duty hours, I earned a couple of graduate degrees, one's in education and the other one is a Master of Science in Human Performance Technology. Anyway, as I been, began preparing to transition from the military to the civilian world, I specifically chose to come home to Boone County for my final tour, where I served as the Executive Officer of the Navy ROTC unit here at Mizzou. I wanted to come back to Boone County because Boone County is home. I decided to run for office because I want to help make Boone County a better place to live for all of our residents. I believe in order to do that, we have got to return to the basics of governing. One, step one is accountability through transparency. Step two is emphasis on public safety. Step three is infrastructure development, economic development. And I got the stop sign, so we'll hit the brakes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Musgraves. And Mr. Asbury, you may present your opening remarks. Absolutely, Barbara, first and foremost, thanks for the opportunity this evening. Uh, my name is Tristan Asbury, candidate for Northern Boone District 2. Uh, I currently serve as the Director of Strategic Communications for the Missouri Association of Realtors. That's Missouri's largest trade association, serving just over 22,000 members. In addition, my wife, Carrie, and I own and operate a mid-Missouri company focused on promoting Missouri agriculture. Can't tell you how fortunate we are to not only promote Missouri's larger, largest industry, but an industry we're so passionate about. In regard to why I'm running, first, this is my home. Uh, this is where my wife and I have planted our roots, started our business, and most importantly, intend to raise our children. I want to ensure the future is bright for not only my children, but for families throughout Boone County for future generations to come. Second, and most importantly, I think the county is lacking the leadership it deserves. I'm running to make a positive difference in county leadership and ensure that we move Boone County toward greater growth, safer communities, and higher living standards. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now move to uh, the questions for the candidates, and we will rotate uh, the first person to, eat, to answer each question and the candidates will have a minute and a half to answer each question. And I'll use the index cards to indicate uh, when time is running out. Uh, the first question um, is, the Boone County Health Department is supervised by both the City of Columbia and the Boone County Commission. What actions of the Boone County Health Department do you support 
and or oppose. And given the rise in COVID-19 cases in Boone County, what, if anything, would you do to get more help and resources to the Boone County Health Department to limit and reduce COVID-19 cases in Boone County? And we'll start with um, Mr. Riddles. So that, it's a complicated issue when you have two different political issues, two different political bodies supervising one apolitical body. As for which, which things that they've done that I oppose, I oppose mandates, I oppose closing businesses and starving people out of business. I think we could have done a better job by educating people. We've got a mask mandate and we have, people don't know how to operate a mask. They're constantly fussing with them. They've created more of a problem than they solve when they're used like that. It's like any tool, if you misuse it, it's not effective at best and it's ineffective or counterproductive at worst. I believe those are problems that we've had because we're not communicating how to use a mask if we're gonna do that, when it's appropriate, when it's not appropriate. I oppose a blanket application of those things because people have different needs. And treating everybody as if they're all identical, all equal, is not the way we wanna go. I think we can address it much better with education. You look like you have a question. Oh, no, I was just looking at whether the time was expiring and you're well within the time. Thank you. Um, then the next person is Mr. Musgraves. Um, you can answer that question also. Okay. And I can repeat it if you need to. Yeah, will you, will you please repeat the first part of that question? Uh, the Boone County Health Department is supervised by both the City of Columbia and the Boone County Commission. What actions of the Boone County Health Department do you support and or oppose? And given the rise in COVID-19 cases in Boone County, what if anything would you do to get more help and resources to the Boone County Health Department to limit and reduce COVID-19 cases in Boone County? Okay, um, I'll go back to what I mentioned in my opening statement. I'm a, I really don't know what to argue for or against that board because they're not very transparent. They haven't been until we, uh, until we hit the uh, in which case I tend to agree with Mr. Mr. Riddles. Uh, I'm not, I do not support mandates. Um, I do not support the mask. I, I did not support closing down small businesses um, and, and putting people's livelihoods at risk or, or out of business totally when, when Walmart, Home Depot, or making money hand over fist and people are going there and shopping like, like nothing's happening. Um, I think education, Mr. Reynolds, correct, education is the way to go. Uh, I think we're all adults here and, and we can decide for ourselves when we need to or don't need to wear a mask. Depending on what's going on at our home, if we, if we go home to our elderly uh, parents or our grandparents who we go visit, well then obviously they're more at risk and that's the education thing. Then you know to put on a mask and uh, before you visit people that are higher at risk, if that education was out there. Um, what could Boone County do or what, what could the health department do? How would we bring more resources? Do we really need more resources? I mean, if you look at, there's been three deaths, that's 0 .00016 of the population of Boone County. There's, been, uh, there's 186 active cases. That's 0 .0010 percent of the population, or of the, the 181,000 people in Boone County. And there's six currently hospitalized. That's even a smaller number. So how much do we really need? Do we need more money, more resources? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not so sure. Thank you. And Mr. Um, Asbury. Yeah. Uh, so as the other gentleman noted, I don't agree with the government mandate at all. I think they need to stay out of it. That said, I think we need to take a couple steps back. I think one thing that uh, current leadership is doing is they're just making rash decisions without looking into the future and what the outcome holds. Uh, that said, I think we need to bring common sense back to any of the decisions that are made uh, in a similar crisis moving forward. Uh, the, the decisions that were made during this pandemic, they were made strictly on a health basis. They didn't take into account the economic factors that related to the businesses closing their doors and losing their job. And truth be told, many additional health-related issues were caused because of that. Uh, many 
of those decisions were made by individuals that had little to no skin in the game. They had a job regardless of their decision that they made. Uh, and in the future, we need to, if I had a situation and I could fix this situation for the county, I'd propose a task force. That's one thing I thought that they lacked tremendously. Again, one person making a decision that affects so many folks. Uh, that task force, I'd make it up at healthcare workers and business leaders throughout the community. Uh, with that said, we wouldn't have a narrow perspective of one spectrum of society. Uh, we'd have an all-encompassing decision made that would benefit all of those affected. Any time a crisis such as this arises, we need to make sure we're not making the narrow decisions based on one aspect of society. That said, I want to reiterate that the decisions made by individuals that have no skin in the game won't cut it. These decisions need to be made by those who are actually affected. It's not about what, what one thinks is the best decision. It's about the realities of life. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll go on to the next question. The Boone County Commission makes decisions over development in the county. What do you like and agree with that the county is doing now? And what would you change or do differently if you were elected? And we'll start with um, Jim Musgraves on this question. And this has to do with development. Is that, is that, uh... Count, right, Count, development in the county. Okay, well, I, I, um, right now there's this west area plan going on, and I think, uh, I think that's, that's a good start, but I, I, I'm a little bit hesitant for the city to grow. Um, I'm not sure that's needed. That, that just started. It's, it's the, the planning and, the, and development committee still working on it. I, I couldn't find enough information on the west area plan um, to, to speak too much about it. Uh, another issue um, that's going on with development and, and in, in Boone County is the, is the wind farm up north. Um, I think Boone County, the, the commission's kind of set, stepped back from what I can understand. They're kind of letting the, the people that have the farms up there talk about it. There is a precedence to, for uh, the wind farm. It's in Ohio, the Ohio Valley now, uh, the same company that did it. Um, and then something that's kind of kind of everybody, all the, all the candidates here mentioned before, the uh, Boone County Fairgrounds. I'm still upset about that. I think we really need to look at what happened behind the scenes on that whole process right there. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say about that at this point in time. Okay, thank you. Um, then we go to uh, Tristan Asbury. Yep, uh, thank you. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. So I'm gonna kind of bounce off that on the West Area Plan. Uh, in all reality, it's a good idea. There's not a lot of information out there, but I work for the Missouri Association of Realtors. A couple things we focus on are real property rights and expansion. Uh, for Boone County, Columbia specifically moving forward, for us to expand and be, or for us to be successful, we have to expand. Uh, that said, in conversation with folks about that plan, there's many that are skeptical, even some that are sitting on the planning and zoning board. A uh, reason for that and looking at the project for what it is. Years down the road, when they determine additional areas for this development, for uh, be it residential, commercial, or industrial, residents will push back and rightfully so because they'll go based on what's on paper at this moment. Uh, I think that we need to take a couple steps back and look into the future. Uh, what's that going to look like? Do we need 85% of this and making this number up? But kind of comparing back to the East Area plan, uh, do we need 80 some percent of this in agricultural? And then we find out that we want to expand because Boone County needs more homes. It is no secret that we're there's a shortage of homes right now. Um, the days on market's going down, uh, the price is going up. We have to provide these single family homes. This is a great opportunity for that. And once you start developing these residential homes, commercial investment follows. That said, we just have to make sure that we zone right now correctly for years down the road. So it'll save a lot of heartache for everybody on the back end. Thank you, Mr. Asbury. And uh, Mr. Riddles, your turn to answer. Uh, sure. Um, the county, the Boone County Commission makes decisions over development in the county. What do you like or agree with that the county is doing now? And what would you change or do differently if you were elected? Well, so the county, okay, got it. The county commission needs to be responsive to the needs of landowners. 
we shouldn't be telling landowners what to do with their property. Now we do have a we do have an obligation to protect adjacent landowners from harm done by a change in their neighbors. That being said, if you own the land, you should be responsible and in charge of what's going on on that property. We shouldn't be driving that from the county. We shouldn't be driving that from the commission. We have to coordinate, we have to cooperate, we need infrastructure, we need infrastructure pathways. All of those things have to be taken into account. We have to be looking down the road, who owns the property, who wants to develop it. Some people don't want development. Growth is a part of a healthy economy. We have to make room for that. Thank you. Um, third question, and this time we'll start with um, Mr. Asbury. And uh, the question is, what makes you better qualified than the other candid candidates in this primary um, to be the next Republican candidate for Northern Boone County Commissioner? Thank you. Um, my experiences, they derive from small business ownership, governmental experience while working for the Missouri Department of Ag. Uh, there I led export marketing from Missouri Ag across the state and in my current role as the Director of Strategic Communications for the Missouri Association of Realtors. And to note, that's Missouri's largest trade association serving over 22,000 members. Uh, I've been fortunate to, be, to see both sides of the economy. Uh, from being employed by the government to owning my own business, I understand when these two entities need to work in tandem and when they need to stay separate. Uh, in addition, I'm confident in my leadership abilities. I'm not afraid to seek input. Proverbs 1522 states, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. In this role, one has to be willing to suck up their pride and seek input from those around them that are more knowledgeable in those specific situations. We learn from that, and that's what benefits our constituents. Lastly, I'm willing to stand up for what I believe in and make the hard decisions. Decisions made won't always please everybody, but I guarantee every decision I'll make will be based on fact and what is in the best interest of those that have elected me to serve them. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Riddles. My experience in leadership is what makes me what I believe to be the best candidate for my, my years in the, in the corporate world, my current, my current position, leading projects, getting teams built and put together. I'll have to build a team a dozen times a year with different projects. I've worked with everybody from the state, to the nuclear power plant, to the school district. My experience building leader leadership is what makes me the candidate to pick. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Musgraves. That's going to sound awfully familiar, Mr. Riddles. <laughs> I believe that uh, my leadership experience, I have three decades of leadership experience in, in a variety of environments. Uh, everything that you would, a uh, voter would reasonably expect out of a commissioner I have done and successful doing it uh, in the United States and outside of the United States. Um, I, I actually ran my own little, my own little island out in the middle of the Indian Ocean for a while where I had a budget of $160 million 2,800 people, supply chains, logistics, uh, getting all kinds of people to have to get along from 15 separate organizations out on a little island. It's a beautiful place, Diego Garcia, if you've ever, if you've ever been there. Uh, my leadership experience is, is what uh, team building experience and the success that I had over the last three decades uh, in doing all the above, I believe, is what makes me the, the candidate of choice. The problem I see with the Boone County Commission is a leadership vacuum right now. Um, and, and if we get somebody in there that knows what they're doing, that knows the difference between leadership and management, knows how to lead and how to manage, uh, I think we can do a lot of great things. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, and um, I have one more question. I don't see any questions from, can from the audience yet. So I'll go into another league question. Um, Janet Thompson, who will be the Democratic um, nominee or candidate for uh, the November election for Boone, Northern Boone County Commissioner, um, is serving on many uh, boards and commissions. She's the liaison to the Boone County Community Services Department 
which includes the Boone County Services Board, Community Health and Community Services Advisory, um, the Boone County Family Resources Board, Central Missouri Community Action, Cradle to Career Alliance, as, whether, as well as other boards, including the Criminal Justice Administration and the Judicial, the Judicial and Law Enforcement Task Force. Those are some of the, the boards she serves on. What would you do similarly or different than what she is doing now on those boards if you are ele elected in November? And we'll start with um, Trist. Oh, we started with Tristan last time. So uh, I guess Brendan Fiddles would be the beginning. Hopefully I'm not losing. <laughs> now you're good. Not knowing who the, not knowing who the rest of the commission works with well, it's hard to say who would be the best fit for each one of those boards with a change on the commission. Now that being said, all of those people need to be participating. We need to interact with all of those people. Now maybe it's sitting on the board, maybe it's directing, but uh, any of those boards are people that I would be interested in having productive, in trying to have productive conversations with. I can't imagine you wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to have a productive conversation. But all of those boards are relevant. All of those groups and gatherings bring information back toward the county commission. And that's what the county commission's job is, to share perspectives, to represent the people of Boone County. Those are just small groups of people of Boone County. Thank you. Uh, we'll go next to Mr. Musgraves. Um, okay, uh, I'm not quite sure what Janet does on them boards. Um, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected as the next Boone County Commissioner for the Northern District, District 2, I have no problem being a, a member of all of those boards and trying to solve the problems that they're, that they're tackling. You know, I mean, if they were those boards were built for a reason. And I have no problem uh, engaging and talking to people, learning from them, and, and leading where I can, or being a follower if I if I, if, if that has to be the case. Um, but in terms of what Janet has done with those boards, I have no idea what she's done. Um, again, it goes back to the transparency and accountability, uh, or accountability through transparency. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Boone County Community Services is under is, is under community health. Uh, that's that's uh, that's where the five hundred thousand dollars a year was coming from the Barnes uh, Jewish Christian Hospital lease. Um, if you go and look that up on the show me dot, uh, show me Boone dot com website, they haven't had a meeting since October of twenty sixteen. That's five hundred thousand dollars a year that we're getting. Where's that money going? Where's that going? Who's in charge of that? So you know the, the the not knowing what what's going on. There's there's not a uh, there's not there's transparency is not there. So I have no idea uh, what Janet's doing. Thank thank you, Mr. Mus Musgraves and Mr. Asbury. Um, your chance to answer the question. Yep. So in conversation I've had, there's a lot of boards that Janet's sitting on and anybody that walks in that position is going to be sitting on a similar amount of boards and commissions. Uh, one thing that I hear time and time again, though, is these individuals that are serving as our commissioners, a lot of them are sticking on the same boards, boards for the entirety of their terms. These boards are meant to be transitioned to share, to garner knowledge. If we're sitting there and I go sit on the board for eight or 12 years, what is that, how is that benefiting the Southern District Commissioner or the Presiding Commissioner when it comes to making opportunities for transition? If I'm not there the next term, who's going to pick up where I was at and how that, how's that going to benefit that Board of Commission? Uh, I just want to ensure that walking into this, that these folks were willing to uh, pass this on, pass the torch on essentially. I serve on this board for a period of time and then I transition to the next individual because that only not benefits myself these health boards, it doesn't stop in the Southern District or stop in the Northern District and not relate to the Southern District. Uh, they cross over. This is cross training, and I think we need to focus on that cross training moving forward. Again, it's all about what's best for the constituents. So that's what I do moving forward. Thank you very much. And it looks like uh, we have some questions. So I will go to um, those. Um, one question is, 
what is your opinion of calf goes? And we'll start with, um, I guess, Jim Musgraves. What, what is a calf? Um, it's the uh, confined animal feed. CAFO. Um, CAFO. CAFO, yeah, C-A-F-O. Mm -hmm. What, 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 is, what is a CAFO? I have no idea what that is. I, can't, I guess I don't have It's a, a confined operation. animal feeding operation. I don't know enough about that. Okay, okay, okay. That's fair enough. We'll, we can go to um, then uh, uh, Brendan Riddles. Knowing what they are, having been around a couple of them, I'm not a big fan. I understand we have to feed people. And the effective way, efficient way to do that is through those projects. Now, it's, I don't think there's any place in Boone County that's suited for one of those. There's too much effluent and too much uh, olfactory discharge. So okay. I, I don't think we need any in Boone County. I understand we have to have them. And, you know, it's another one of those things that nobody wants in their yard, but everybody thinks we need. Well, thank you, Mr. Riddles. And then Mr. Asbury. I'm going to come at this from a different approach because I think there's a huge misunderstanding in regard to CAFOs. There is a time and a place for a CAFO for these feeding operations, but there is a huge misunderstanding in regards to what CAFOs are. People nine out of 10 times automatically associate these with hog operations. That is not the case. You can have chickens, you can have everything. It's just confined feeding operations. That said, we have some individuals in the county that raise chickens and are very well thought respect and if we go in saying that we can't have CAFOs we're disregarding something that is bringing money to this economy in addition to that uh, and moving forward um, I, lost my um, I think the folks of Boone County need to know and understand in conversation with Missouri uh, Pork Association and entities of that nature the likelihood of additional CAFOs and what people directly relate to these hog feeding facilities it's not going to happen here. The land prices are too high. The taxes are too high. Uh, and people just aren't going to pay for that. It's, it's, not, it's not theoretical. It just won't work. So I think people need to back off off that subject a bit. Uh, it's a case-by-case -case basis. We just can't shut it out all the way across the board. Uh, and we'll deal with it when it comes. But right now, I think people uh, ease their mind just a little bit, but that it's not realistic for what they're looking for. So... Not completely opposed, we just need to look at it for what it is on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go to uh, whether there are some other questions. Okay, um, how would you address the needs of unhoused residents? And, um, for this one, we'll start with uh, Tristan Asbury. So do we have any more specifics in regard to that question? That's are we talking homeless or are we talking, what are we looking at here? I assume it includes homeless primarily. That the I'm yeah. just reading the question from no, the fair. audience I'll member. So I don't have any inside information. Yeah. Okay. Um, homeless, they homeless. said Perfect. homeless. Yeah. Almost. So actually, I was fortunate growing up, not fortunate for the situation, but fortunate in the household I grew up in. Uh, when I was younger here in Columbia, my father, uh, with several of his friends, they have a not-for-profit that actually works with homeless individuals. And I had the opportunity to go with them and pass them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, whatever it might be. And it was a very unique home situation, but I actually had homeless folks living with me in my house. Um, and we sell these folks, they might be military veterans, they might just been folks with hard luck um, that went from nothing to their married and making a great living now. And it was hard. It was hard on us. It was hard on everybody, but it was a trust. It was an act of God to do it. Um, the homeless population in Columbia is not what it used to be, but it is picking up again. That said, uh, that's tough. The homes that are available for these individuals in Columbia, they're overloaded as it is. We just don't have enough and the charity's not there uh, to move forward. I think we need to look at it, what is available in the county. I don't want to say it's our job to clean up the mess because you just can't figure that out, but we need to do what we can do to assist. Uh, speaking with children 19 years and younger, you have the Children's Services Fund. 
I really want to see a lot more in-depth chart of how that money is being used. I know part of it is to put up some of these folks at a younger age to transition them from being homeless onto the next steps of their life and get them going. Uh, it just takes more conversation to figure this out. And right now, I don't have an in-depth detail, and I apologize for that, uh, but we'll most certainly look into that some more. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Riddles, you're next on this question. I believe that the generosity of the people of Boone County is virtually unmatched. I believe if we just draw enough attention to it as an advocate, we can solve a lot of these problems. Michael Kraft doing good work. We don't see eye to eye on everything, but there's a lot of things we do. And the work that he's doing with the homeless in Columbia is honorable work. That being said, there are people who do not want to have a home. I had a long talk with a fellow who was proud of his status as domestically unencumbered. I wouldn't want to trap him either. Help him when he can. Help people when they can. But draw attention to it. Be an advocate for these people. Keep the county resources operating efficiently is the single most important thing that the county commission can do so that the resources that are sent that direction will be useful, not just spent. Thank you, Mr. Riddles and Mr. Musgraves. I, I tend to agree with both uh, Mr. Asbury and Mr. Riddles on what's going on. I think education is critical. I, I've seen uh, the generosity and the charity of Boone County residents uh, firsthand with the with the with the uh, ribbon cutting, the welcome home, which tends to focus on on veterans and uh, how fast that grew, um, taking care of our veterans here. I think in not just addressing the needs, uh, but we need to. There's got to we got to determine what the root cause of homelessness is in Boone County, and that that's where you will, that's where I would start. Um, you know, besides housing and. and are trying to find a place for these these individuals to live and making sure that they have food and they're warm in the in the winter and, and cool in the summer. Uh, we need to address the learn what the root cause of the homelessness is uh, and, to, and try and fix that problem. In the meantime, I think educate letting people in Boone County know uh, the severity or lack thereof of the homelessness problem here. I think the charity will kick in. And, and like I said, I've seen it with the Welcome Home Organization. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go and see if we have any other questions from the viewers. Oh, what? This is a relevant question and simple, but not, the question is simple, not necessarily the answer. Um, what can the county do to ensure the continued viability of Boone Hospital? And we'll start with, um, let's see, Mr. Musgraves first. You, you know, I, I, I'm honestly not sure. I mean, what role should Boone County Commission play in that? I, I don't have that answer. For you. I don't know if the commission has a role in, in ensuring the continued viability of, of, of the hospital. Okay, we'll go on to then um, Mr. Uh, riddles. I think the most effective thing we can do is uh, consciously watch over their shoulder. Make sure they know we're watching over their shoulder. There's, there's a board of trustees whose job it is to take care of the hospital. We can't just turn them loose and let them run wild, but watch over their shoulder and help them when they need it. And Mr. As, thank you, Mr. Riddles. And Mr. Asbury. Yeah, so Boone Hospital, that's the largest single asset that the county has. I've had the opportunity to meet with the trustees and kind of talk to them about what's taking place with the transition. Uh, they're doing it right. They're bringing it back home. We had an entity such as St. Louis that it's a big city, but there's no, there's so many differences, not similarities between what was happening. They were draining the straw. Uh, when we bring this local management back, we'll be over, it will take off in the direction it needs to take. That said, I don't know that we need to be a part of it because funding comes from that entity. We receive money from the hospital each year uh, to the community health fund. But at the same time, we need to trust that they're doing what they're doing. They've got a board as it is, a very knowledgeable board, and they're looking at expanding that board. Uh, moving forward, I think we need to be there by their side. It doesn't hurt to be a part of the meetings like, we have, like the presiding commissioner continues to do. 
that fills us in when the time comes and help is needed. Uh, but I'm not going to micromanage. It's not my job to tell someone what to do when I don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. Uh, so we, we need to trust that the right folks are in the position to move forward and be there to support them when they need it in ways that we deem viable. Uh, thank you. I understand we have one question in our Q&A section here. Um, the question is, agriculture is an important part of the Northern District. What makes you qualified to represent their interests? And for that, um, we'll start with Mr. Riddles. Never been a farmer. Know a bunch of them, talk to a bunch of them about a lot of things. And that's the job of the commission. It can't be everybody. But you have to bring, you have to go out and meet them. You can't live in downtown Columbia and expect to know what the farmers are thinking and what the farmers need from the Lee County Commission. So being available, being out in the county, being in rural Missouri, making a point of communicating with the people who live in rural Missouri. That's what, the, that's what I can do. And then we'll go to Mr. Asbury. My favorite question so far, I love this. So I grew up farming. To this day, we still do stuff here in the country. We'll go out and we'll cut hay and bale it. Uh, that's what we do. My wife and I, we own and operate a Missouri company focused on promoting Missouri agriculture. Many of the house, or many of the companies, such as Missouri Cattlemen's Association, Missouri Farm Growers Association, Missouri Department of Agriculture, the list goes on and on. That's what we do. That's what our employees do. Uh, have been fortunate to be raised in that setting. I understand a hard day's work in regard to that. I understand what these folks do. Most importantly, I understand what they need, and that's for us to stay out of the way and let them operate as they see fit. Now, it has to benefit the county. We have to make sure that it's not within the county, but they need the freedom to operate as they see fit, and we got to do what we have to do as a commission to ensure that their doors stay open for future generations to come. Uh, we need to ensure economic development in the area allows their children to come back uh, they might not be able to transition straight to the farm, but they'll have a job in this area that they can work towards for when they do take over that farm for their parents. Uh, that said, my background worked for the Missouri Department of Agriculture for several years as well, in addition to farming, and we currently own a company that does that. We've done it for years. Uh, so that's my background and experience, and um, no more to say on that. So. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Musgraves. I think, uh, oh, Tristan had one of his buddies tee up that question. That was a good one for you, pal. I love that one, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know who submitted it. it, was it. it. That buddy, yours a steak dinner, man. Good on him. Hey, look, just like Mr. Riddles, I have no experience uh, in farming, um, but I do have a lot, of, a lot of experience leading teams of people, large and small. Um, when the people I was leading and working with and for – uh, knew more about everything than I did. You don't have the smartest guy in the room about any one subject. You just have to know how to listen and, and serve their purpose and the purpose of the county, uh, greater county, uh, when you go before the, the other two commissioners uh, and, and whoever else you deal with. I, and I think I'm capable of doing that, even though, uh, you know, I mean, I don't even try to grow tomatoes. It's just, it's just, it's bad. It's, it's not going to work out well for me. So, <laughs> That's pretty much it. Leadership, I think, is where it's at. Thank, thank you. And now we'll go to um, the time for closing statements with the candidate speaking in reverse ballot order. Um, so, uh, Tristan Asbury, you may make your closing arguments. And you will have two minutes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Barbara, first and foremost to you and the members of the League of Women Voters. Uh, seriously, thank you for putting this opportunity on. As we were discussing before we started tonight, it's no secret. It's been a unique time for campaign. Uh, so having opportunities such as this to share our message with folks throughout the county is greatly appreciated. And that's what's needed. These folks need to truly understand who they're voting for and why they're voting for them. Uh, that said, I believe that based off my experiences, I have the skill sets to move Boone County toward greater growth, safer communities, and higher living standards. As I previously said, this is my home. I want to ensure the future is bright for not only my children, but for the families throughout Boone County for future generations to come. 
Boone County deserves more, and I believe I'm the best candidate to deliver to be expected. Again, I want to thank everyone for allowing me the opportunity to be here this evening. That said, if anybody wants to seek out additional information, I'd encourage them to visit my website at www.tristanasbury.com. There they can learn more about me, including issues I think are important for Boone County's future success. And like, lastly, I'd like to ask for your vote on August 4th. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And now, Mr. Jim Musgraves, you may present your closing remarks. Two minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you to the League of Women Voters. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. It's always always good to talk uh, uh, with voters as well as the other gentlemen that uh, are running for the office. Um, I think I'm the best candidate because I have the leadership background and management experience to successfully perform as your Boone County Commissioner for the District 2 Northern District. I don't have a professional consultant. I don't have a, a uh, huge network of donors. Uh, what I do have is three decades of living a service above self-life. Uh, what I do have is uh, three decades of successful performances of leadership in, in multiple leadership positions, um, large and small, complex and not so complex. Uh, I do have a record of building successful cross-organizational relationships. I've been very successful in developing plans to solve issues and fiscally constrained environments. Um, I have the leadership and management experience required to be very successful as a Boone County Commissioner. Service and giving back are not political slogans for me. It's been a way of life for the last 34 plus years. I very much appreciate your vote on August 4th and I look forward to talking to you in the future. Thank you very, very much. And then Brendan Reynolds may you may present your closing remarks. Again, thank you to the League of Women Voters for preventing, excuse me for me today, for, for providing this opportunity. This has been the social media campaign and it's not my forte. I'd much rather sit down and talk with people, but this is what we have to do these days. Why I'm the best candidate is because of my experience in Boone County. I've raised a family in Boone County. I've got kids in Boone County schools right now. I've been around this county for decades. I know people. I'm willing to go out and meet the people. I'm not going to hide in downtown Columbia. I know I'm not the smartest guy at everything. You don't have to be. I'm not the expert at everything, but I'm really good at getting people together and finding common ground and getting them to work together. And that's what we need. We need somebody who will communicate with the rest of the, the county, with the, the residents of Boone County. And we need somebody who will bring their concerns to the commission and represent them in the commission. And that's what I plan to do. Thank you for your time and thank you for your vote. Thank you. Uh, the League of Women Voters wants to thank all the candidates and the community members for participating in tonight's Zoom forum. Uh, this forum is recorded and it will be posted on the League of Women Voters website and Facebook page. Um, I also want to thank Sharon Schneeberger, who is our Zoom technician and coordinator for making this program possible, and also Carol Schreiber, who made all the arrangements uh, for this program tonight. And lastly, I want to remind everyone uh, to safely vote by absentee or in person August 4th. Good luck to all of you, and thank you very much for participating. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Have a good evening.